Wednesday night. It is 8 o'clock. Do you know where your DJ's at? I know where I'm at. I'm here with you. Yes, it is a DJ roundtable time yet again. And as always, I have some great other DJs here this evening. And hopefully we get a few others may pop in as well. Uh, this is the last show of 2023. Uh, we will be back in 2024. And you want to mark your calendars for the 9th of July, of January. I was going to say July for a second there. But January. Uh, so January 9th. That is the next time we will have a show. Uh, this way, everyone can enjoy Christmas and New Year's with friends and family and have fun and not worry about everything. Plus, also, don't want uh, anyone to uh, worry. We are, uh, we'll be back. But again, I'm going to let you know that we'll be back on the 9th for our next episode. So, uh, yeah. And then we'll be on, if you're watching it on YouTube, we we'll back on YouTube on the 15th of January. And if you want to, make sure you go back and watch the older episodes on YouTube. Uh, YouTube is very easy to get a hold of uh, and very easy to go through and find a DJ roundtable. The other thing also is that if you get a chance to, do me a favor. Help me with the algorithm. Make sure you click down below. You click that like button. Make sure you click the bell icon. Make sure you follow the channel. Do all that right there, and that will help the channel grow. But it's all about algorithms, and it, algorithms, they look at little channels like us as not big stuff. Now, I do have some DJs here who have a lot of people who follow them. Uh, if you're one of those DJs who follow one of the other DJs here, say so in the chat. Do you watch the other DJs? Say so in the chat. If there's someone you want to see on the show, ask. Maybe I'll ask them. But here's the big thing. Since it is our last show of the year, <clears throat> and you have to excuse me, I am uh, I'm not feeling 100% today. Um, since it is the last show of the year, uh, I want to do a retrospective of the year for our DJs and ask them some questions regarding their DJ year. And I'm going to start with uh, DJ Cool Thing. So first thing first, I want to ask you, DJ Cool Thing, uh, the best DJ on the beach, as oh, yeah. well as uh, his real name is Hunter. And, uh, you know, we always call me people with real names. You know, they get, the, they get the cool DJ name, then they have the real name because we want people to relate to them. And also, I want to ask you this, and I'm going to ask the rest of the group of this as well. But I want to give you a first crack at it. In the past year, in 2023, I know you didn't have tons of gigs. Nope. But the, of the gigs you did... What would you say was your best and favorite gig you love to do? Well, my favorite DJ gig of 2023 will always be the 70th birthday party because I got to use my um, Rockville Rock booth and I got to be on a stage and be in a very beautiful, beautiful ballroom and beautiful chandeliers. And it was just an amazing party overall. So you would say if you had ranked at your top one, what would you be your number two? Number two would be my aunt and uncle's uh, 40th wedding anniversary. Okay. And what would be number three? Number three would be... Oh, let's see. Uh, my family cyberpunk party at the end of the summer. What was your I got to play a lot of... EDM and stuff like that during the party. <clears throat> what was your favorite part of, of number one? What made number one stand out more than number two or three? Well, just the venue and the people I went, actually went to church with and just being around amazing people. Okay. So my next DJ up, I'm going to ask actually ask Dwayne again. Um, Dwayne has you know a few gigs here and there. He keeps growing his business. Dwayne, what was your favorite gig of the year? What was number one? Um, the wedding I did in October. Okay. Where um, <clears throat> the people pretty much danced from the beginning to end. She said they were the da they are a partying group, but I didn't believe it because you know a lot of people always hype up their group and they yeah. don't they don't <laughs> be there. But this group oh, yeah. danced, and then I had the um request now app. And they had it going just all night, so it was it was hard to try to keep up. So that yeah. was my favorite. Yeah. 
See, that's another reason why um, the 70th birthday party was my favorite because they all dance. None of the other gigs I had, you know, they danced. But that was the only gig I had that where people danced. Okay. Okay. So like, your I, second favorite gig, Dwayne, is what this year? Uh, this one is technically not in 2023, but it was close enough. It was the. Um, 40th and the no the 50th anniversary I mean birthday party gig I did um at the pizzeria downstairs now that was another partying group too so that was a, that that was was a challenging one right you had to go downstairs with equipment go in the basement yeah. and the venue wasn't yeah. really helpful <laughs> yeah so that would have been my second um favorite but and then the rest of my third? third ones um they all been the same but as far as being eventful, I want to say the um, the back to school event I did for my church where the storm came in and blew my tent and got everything wet. So that would have been that's not the best, but that was the most eventful. So why is number one, number one, what, what in your heart or your mind that makes it number one? Oh, because they danced. It was it was. I didn't have to work. I basically had them from beginning to end. And we all vibe from straight from the um, start. And you know you have a good gig when you you know you train a wreck or pick the wrong song. And they still vibe with you regardless. So, yeah, that was the best one. All right. So I'm going to go to uh, Jeff. What was your favorite of the year? Uh, probably I'd have to say the... Um... The homecoming dance for Northern I did had 750 kids there. It was crazy. Um, it went off though. It went off really well. Uh, everybody was happy uh, at the end of the night. Everybody danced. So, um, you know, the setup was uh, familiar. So I knew where everything was, the, the plugins, everything. So it went, uh, it went very well for me. So I would say that was my favorite huge crowd. So it was fun. Okay. What was number two for you? Uh, number two, I'd probably say the eighties party back in, uh, last January or February. That was pretty cool because, um, I was up on a stage, um, and they had these two huge, um, uh, projector, uh, screens that I tied into with my video output. So, and it was a good thing because my TV, um, uh, broke. <laughs> I don't know if it was on the trip down or on the unload of the previous uh, previous one, but uh, something happened to it and uh, cracked cracked the screen. So I didn't realize it until I uh, pulled it out and set it up. And, uh, and I'm like, yeah, I'm not using that tonight. So I'm like, guess what? We're using the two projector screens up and they were huge. They were like, you know, like 15 feet each. So uh, it worked out really well. So that was probably my second favorite, even though the crowd wasn't that crazy into the dance um you know it, it was still a fun evening for me i love playing 80s music so yeah, and what was 80s. number what was number three for you three was probably the prom uh same school northern high school um uh for for us prom is just junior and senior uh so there weren't uh as many i mean there was a lot of kids there there was probably 600 kids there but um uh, but homecoming the reason it's number one is it's uh, ninth through twelfth grade, so it was a lot more diversity of kids and age, and 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 everything. And um, but the prom was really fun. Um, just you know, just uh, announcing the prom king and queen, and um, you know, playing some silly songs along the way. That was pretty fun. I'd say that's number three. Okay, so next I'm going to go to DJ Brentley. I, he's all over the place between clubs and events. What was your favorite event of the year? Well, because I do both clubs and weddings, and I definitely give preference and like doing clubs. A little, they're more fun. And to quote us, uh, one of the newer Star Trek movies, this year weddings became to be very to me to be episodic, if you will, where it was almost at times okay. Here's the nine o'clock ritual. All the old folks need to leave. Let's play wobble. Go. And like clockwork, everybody does what they're supposed to do and leave. All right, let's play. Yeah, it's 930 by now. Let's just get them going hard. 
But there were a few definite ones that have stuck out in my head. And April 22nd, Saturday of uh, this year, um, was senior pub, pub crawl night for UWL. And I started my day at Animal House at 3 o'clock that day. Uh, at 3.30, directly on the street behind me, the first light pole fell down. And the day really digressed from there, where I was getting flashed by 4 o'clock. Uh, when I went to walk down to Legends to finish out that day, I'm avoiding a couple people puking on the sidewalk, holding up against buildings. And it, it was just one of those, at like, and one of those nights when you're a DJ that everything you play is going to knock on wood, is going to hit or will hit. And you know it. So you can almost, you can command the crowd to do what you want them to do. I need, okay, you guys have been jumping and boom, boom, boom for like five minutes now. Let's bring you down a little bit so you go buy a drink and calm you down and bring you back up. There's a lot of that, but that was my number one of all of them. And closely behind it, number two this year was doing a, someone who's going to be one of my daughter's teachers in a couple of years at the school she'll be going to. And Lexi and Cameron, uh, September, or I'm sorry, July 29th at the Cargill room. And that entire reception was going four to the floor the entire night. So much so that there were 150 people on my dad's floor singing Welcome to the Black Parade as their last song of the night. Immediately after that, they all went into a box and got their uh, post-wedding pub crawl shirts on, just like they were back at UWL in school. And we all went up as the last stop of the night for their pub crawl at Lacrosse Beer House. And so when they left the car at 11.15, I hastily threw all my gear into the van, sent my van to my house while I run over to Beer House and finish out the night like midnight until bar time. And they got there at like 12.30 and went hard into our time. And that was my definitely my two of me. Uh, then if I, you know, it's kind of a draw between a couple of these. One being New Year's Eve this year, actually, you know, going into 2023 at Animal House because of how nuts and hard it went from literally 8 o'clock until 4.45 in the morning when the really drunken beer muscles started coming out. And at about 5.30, they're like, yeah, we're done doing this. The kids are getting out of hand. We're done. And I'm like, cool. So I think I got home at like 6.30 that night. But that comes in in a tie to another wedding I did, which was a little bit smaller. And that was uh, down on September 15th in Wisconsin, Delta Chula Vista. And they specifically asked me to do... Um, the first 30, 40 minutes, keep the old folks in mind. But after that, all EDM and Mac Miller. And I know a lot of DJs will be like, dude, that's that's a tough call to do. And when you think about it, okay, Mac Miller. So I played like six Mac Miller songs during the dance portion of the night. But being able to pull off a three-hour straight EDM set should almost be a no-brainer. I mean, especially if they get, like, he gave me a great Spotify playlist that wasn't necessarily his must-play, but it was 500 of his favorite EDM songs. And a lot of it, when I look back and forth at it, I picked the no-brainer ones out of his list that I knew would fly, and then he gave me, like, 10 of those that were must-plays, and when I thought, you know, mixed into the night, just play the, what's you know, kind of the golden era of EDM stuff and mix it in with a couple of the new modern pop house here EDM tracks and go back and forth between it. And maybe, you know, if you're going to throw in um, a traditional wedding song in that part of it, throw in a remix so it get you know, it might start with like, for example, uh, Living on a Prayer from Bon Jovi. It might start with the real part of it, but then by the, you know, the time the first chorus comes, we're banging the EDM jump stuff. That one was one of my just musically perfect for me. I, I honestly, one of the best weddings I've ever DJed, in my opinion. But it also gave me a lot of food for thought going after it, you know, that I could take away from it. 
I still have the dude's playlist actually saved in my Spotify because of how many bangers are in it. And for like for Saturday of this week, I'm going back to Legends, which is all EDM and dance music. And I'm probably a little bit more top 40 heavy than most of their DJs. But I'm looking at his list going, yeah, that'd be a good one to pull out and kind of prepping with some of the keynotes from his night for this weekend setting. But those are my faves. Okay. So you, you have a bunch of favorites then. So what would be your top three? Top three will definitely Senior Pop Curl Night. Definitely Cam and Lexi's Wedding at the Cargill. And I'm going to have to say New Year's Eve. I mean, DJing, I mean, literally 10 hours, almost 11 hours straight, not playing the same song twice and keeping the crowd fully engaged the entire time. You can't beat that. And why is number one, the the pub crawl, the number one? Because of how obscenely ruckus, wild, and fun it is. I mean, being at a dance club, what I'm playing is directly... You know what? I could have played bombs, you know, songs that would have killed the average dance floor. But these kids would have ate it up that night because of how loaded they get and how hard they want to go because it's their last hurrah. There I mean, it, it, it even better than Oktoberfest, you have to be a little bit, you know, more middle of the road mainstream with your EDM set there. Senior pub crawl night, it's all the kids that are coming out. All year round, you know what they want to hear, and you can go hard and heavy the entire night. So nice. So I, I forgot to ask Jeff. Jeff, on your number one uh, gig this past uh, year, why is it number one? What made it number one? Uh, probably just the amount of people there and the, the amount of fun. You know, it was playing music to get them all. Um, I mean, they started dancing, you know five songs into the night and did not stop until, you know, the last one left. Um, so it, that that's fun. Uh, when you don't have to work to keep them on the dance floor, you just got to work to keep the music going and, um, and to just to play what they like and it's quick mixing. And you know, that that's, uh, that's fun in itself. So, um, so, you know, just, just the, the, the size of the crowd, um, type of the crowd and you know for an old guy like me to keep uh to keep young kids moving and dancing for four hours three and a half hours uh i, I consider that a success i would say yes too as as well as tj brantley you know again he's he, he he's a he's he's not a young spring chicken i think hunter's <laughs> the youngest guy here and uh, he got what got those guys going what you said for 12 hours you said hmm? you kept people going for 12 hours you said uh brantley about 10, 10 and a half, yeah. So, yeah, and that's a long day. It, it Honestly, it was probably a six-pack of energy drinks and maybe like four or five Diet Cokes throughout the course of the day to keep me going that long. But there is no surreal experience in the world like it, honestly. And you do, at a certain point, yeah, you a little slap happy here when you know you're in the home stretch because you can't legally we i would have had to stop by 8 a.m anyway so they could close for the legal hour but knowing you're in the home stretch around four or five in the morning yeah you kind of get loopy but it's you're, you're almost blissful about it because you've accomplished it that is cool now i'm gonna go to matt the only other man i know who can rock the Bye, house as much as everyone else can what is your number one pick for your best gig of the year? Oh, that's easy. Uh, the wedding where I had the hour long like dubstep set. That one was by far just so awesome. I, I never get to, I mean, I can't say never because I do a lot now, but that was probably number one. Um, I just wish we could have had subwoofers for that because that's one of those venues that doesn't allow subs because the neighbors, but that was one. The one I just did that if you didn't check my Instagram, there's a reel of it. If you haven't checked my Instagram reels lately, I hired a professional videographer guy. Not really professional, but amateur slash professional who's been doing phenomenal work. So all my reels have been just buttery lately. Uh, and they're nice little recaps for the couples to enjoy. But 
that one a couple weeks ago um was probably up there as number two uh simply because it was just like such an awesome crowd but just like sound like the room that it was in was perfect for the sound system the lights looked great uh just all around just awesome crowd um and then number three hmm uh gotta throw something different in there um probably one of the dances probably one of the proms um although no i don't enjoy those like i don't enjoy djing for high school students <laughs> they really i really don't they're not fun well uh, i wouldn't mind you know, i wouldn't mind getting started djing for my own high school that i went to back in um 2009 to 2013 djing for one of their dances and stuff uh probably like, probably when i did like a there's like a newport beach kind of like day club type of thing where I got to play just like house and tropical type music, um, like not dancing, just background clubby day club type of vibe where people are just drinking and enjoying the sun and the beach view. So that probably that was probably number three, just because yeah, that was good. So what yeah, made number I've, one I've had, number one? I mean the dubstep. Like when you get when when a couple's like we're in the dubstep. So when we first start our conversation with them, I'm thinking, okay, maybe the two of them and five, six friends are going to be headbanging. But I had 80% of the people there, a good like 50, 60 people. Well, that's probably not 80%, but a good like 60 people on the dance floor all headbanging at the same time. And I mean, it was just epic. And I'm not talking like light dubstep. We're talking like rail breaker, headbang, like real, real dubstep excision. Um, God. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just it was it was nuts and it was just so much fun so yeah you know, some skrillex uh, in there can't go wrong with skrillex <laughs> yeah no nah, skrillex is not dubstep anymore old skrillex maybe old skrillex yeah that's the old skrillex the new skrillex uh i've got one like remix of new skrillex that's the uh it's, it's called rumble and it uses the sample from uh look at me now the chris brown and uh bust not busta rhymes twista maybe it is busta rhymes yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so that's a, I'm playing that at Legends. That's a banger. Yeah. When you, there's, if you have DMS, there's a, an edit where it drops from that into, uh, Rumble by Skrillex, but it only does it like with the, every time I see a little, 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 like I actually play the full version and then kind of bring in the edit into the Skrillex one. And that way they get the first rapping part and then it starts to go into Rumble. And, uh, that's a good intro into like a dubstep set. So Anytime I get to play music I love like that, um, that's what makes those gigs number one. But again, the wedding I did a couple weeks ago, it was just an awesome wedding, even though it wasn't like heavy EDM. It was just all around just a a banging party. Okay, cool, cool. Mm -hmm. So everybody has their favorites uh, gigs for this year. I got plenty what of least favorites. <laughs> what is the one thing this year if you can go back and change, you would change differently, you know, either at a gig or at an event or equipment wise or whatever. So I'm going to chart with DJ Brantley on this one. What is the one thing you, if you can go back in your time machine, but somewhere in 2023, drop yourself in and say, go back to your other self, say, don't do X. What is the X? What is the fill in? Huh. I mean, I know the answer to this and it would have been, Rather than procrastinating and bring my girlfriend in 2022, I would have done it in 2022. So I wouldn't have based my booking of 2023 on our relationship. I backed off the throttle instead of my continual, let's keep pushing forward to finding new gigs, you know, going back down to Madison and other big cities. I abided by her wishes and stayed home, basically, and kind of got what I would like to say is complacent. And had I known going into 2023 that we were breaking up or wouldn't be together, I would have booked this year quite, maybe not completely differently, but there would have been some definite different gigs in my lineup. And now going into 2024, this is where I should have been last year going, okay, you have these next five months that are our wedding light. How do you want to map them out? Where do you want to go? Where is the next logical decision in the 
proverbial, you know, food chain that I should be looking to, to book myself. And now, you know, and like you said, I'm no spring chicken. I'm going on 51 competing with kids that are half my age at all of these clubs. So it's really, I wish I had a better chance at mapping out this year in January or before January. So I would be kind of feeling like I'm behind the eight ball from complacency for the last year. If that makes sense. Okay. So that is the one thing you would go back and change is uh, a relationship to change your year. Okay. But do you think that 2023 was a more successful year than 2022 as of right now? Oh, by in a lot of ways, yes. But I think I could have done better this year. I mean, I won't complain, you know, lie that this is one of my most successful years. But there are in a lot of ways – had I dealt with that relationship problem, my head would have been a lot clearer going from last season into the, you know, like the prime of last season to this season, I would have been a lot more prepared mentally and not kind of hating on a lot of things and going maybe, and my first, you know, like March, April, like what was it? Yeah. April, May, and June of this year, I was still questioning myself. Am I the right person to be DJing weddings? You know, once again, going back to the wedding singer, feeling like Billy, you know, Adam Sandler did like, instead of doing weddings, he's doing bar mitzvahs and things, maybe, you know, and that's kind of where my head was at. So, you know, regrouping and getting my head back in the game for it, that would have been a whole thing I could have done differently. All right. And then one thing that uh, you did forget is that when you were down here, I told you next time you come down here, make sure you hook up with us. And have dinner, man. It was all my mirrors. I didn't even, my originally wasn't planning on bringing the kid, but that, you know, then I'm like, okay, you're coming fine. I'll take you out of school. Cool. Then I had to tend to mom and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go down the street and have a beer and just call it a day. It was just, you know, and my mom wanted to do all this stuff with me and the kid. And I'm like, and then she wound up not being able to. So we were kind of bouncing around her a lot. And the one day we did, you know, really try to do, you know, do stuff. Ninety minutes, and my mom's like, "Yeah, I can." I'm like, "Well, let's rent you a, you know, a jazzy go around." She's like, "No, I just want to go home." Okay, cool, cool. But yeah, once things, I'm gonna probably be booking myself one Sunday a month down in Chicago again, and doing the mom rotation. So we'll see how all that plays out. What the free time looks like. Well, we'll always see. And again, anyone here in the, in the anyone here, of course, you know. Uh, come to Chicago, more than glad to hang out with you, at least for uh, at least for a little while, at least buy you a cup of coffee, take you to Dunkin' Donuts or something like that. Cool things for your hangout, you know. Yeah. So, <laughs> cool thing. Hunter, yeah. question for you, sir. What is the one thing, if you can go back to and change for 2023, will be that one thing? If you can drop yourself back in a time drop right there and then you can turn to yourself and say, hey, Hunter, don't do blank. Well, to tell you the truth, I can't really think of anything that I would change because I think I did everything just perfectly, you know, as far as my DJ business and stuff. But I guess it's just hard to get DJ gigs, you know, as of right now. So when it comes to 2024 and stuff, I'm screwed. I guess I might have to close up shop. No more DJ cool thing or cool thing entertainment. I guess so. I think I think you'll get some gigs. I, 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 I haven't had a gigs. big I haven't had a big DJ gig since 2021. I'll fly you out to California and get you some. Uh, I'll stay away from California. It's too dangerous. <laughs> Trying to keep myself safe. We have Disneyland here. I know, <laughs> but yeah, I there's change. Yeah, so there's nothing I would really change about 2023. But I guess if there was one thing I would change is asking more people on my social media, mostly family and friends, if they ever need a DJ. And, you know, getting more gig opportunities. That's that's one thing I would change is getting more gig opportunities. Okay. That's so I'm going to go, I'm gonna go with Dwayne. Fun. Dwayne, what is the one thing for 2023, if you could go back and change, you would change? 
Uh, there was a couple of gigs that I had where I, um, instead of taking the day off the day before to make sure everything was packed in the car and so I wouldn't feel rushed, I wish I had a, went and did that as opposed to going into work because I hate having to rush to a gig and, you know, I'm I'm tired because I'm busy trying to pack up and, and do all this extra stuff. So I wish I had a couple of times took the day off so I can just have time even just to relax or um so I'd be right the next day. Okay. So <laughs> excuse me. You're just trying to take a little bit more be a little more time for yourself here and there and making sure that you get yourself taken care of. Good. So Jeff, what it will be your one thing if you can go back in time and do for this year for gigs and stuff like that and other things, what would that be? I can't think of a whole lot. Uh, I guess I'll go back to the old broken TV and, uh, you know, I, I will blame it on my kids because they help me load up and unload. And when we uh, throw it on the golf cart, uh, they drive it like, you know, it's uh, like they're driving to the pool. <laughs> and um, so after that, I, uh, I hand carry my monitor in its case up to my vehicle. So I would probably go back and, uh, you know, avoid that broken monitor. So that's, you know, it's 300 bucks that uh, only lasted about two and a half years. So is what it is. But, uh, you know, this part of part of doing business stuff breaks. So no big deal. All right. And finally, DJ Salsa's Matt. What would be the one thing you would go back in time and change? Mm, not being so mean to DJ Cool thing. Well, you are. <laughs> no, I wouldn't change. I wouldn't change that. Um, I would say, um, like in in DJ business. Yeah. Yep. Um, probably, I've made some purchases that probably weren't smartest, um, and I've had to return some stuff and lose, you know, a little bit of money, or had to sell some stuff and lose a little bit of money. So I think that. Um, also, just not like it's it's hard because when you want to buy a new speaker it's not really easy to go and listen to it with how constrained supply chain seems to still be for some items so um you know when you look at the specs and you're assuming like the new rcfs that i bought like i already returned those because they sounded terrible so um you know it's maybe that um but also uh, there's been some gigs that I've taken that I probably just shouldn't have where I'm just like, this party is terrible, not because of me, but it's just like, you know, calendar fillers that, yeah, it's money, but is it really worth my time? That's, I think, probably part of it. So that's what I changed. I don't really have one specific thing that I was like, oh, I wish I had done that. Probably also recording more horizontal because uh, I like to record vertical for my stories, but I realized that like, I'd still get the same amount of views, even if the stories were not uh, vertical. So, and then I would have YouTube stuff because I'm too lazy to set up like two cameras and a 360. So um, I usually just set up one on my table and record just so I have something out of the gig. But I think that getting better, that's my goal for next year is now that we've got like a videographer, like just continuing to up the content game and uh, get better on YouTube and be more consistent with uploading. All right. So the one thing is that uh, I, I know you just said that uh, you want to get better and, you know, take more video and stuff like that. But uh, if you had to change, if you had change that around and do other things, why would you not want to add on to that? If you had to do your videos differently, what would you do? What would be the big thing besides go from horizontal to vertical uh, pictures what would be the other thing you would do more of your videos? Uh, I'd like to have like either different camera. I, I really like the way that like, uh, what's his name? Like Justin, the DJ has like multiple camera angles and like some stuff from the crowd. Uh, I kind of like that a lot. Um, so I think just making them look a little bit more polished and professional and, you know, using a, uh, getting like somebody like glow stacks or whoever has with like an actual video person to capture content instead of just putting it on a tripod. But at the end of the day, I also am not charging enough to, well, it's not that I'm not charging enough. I don't want to pay somebody to do that. Um, so 
okay. you know, I'm not getting paid off of YouTube more than a couple dollars a video if I actually take the time and make sure that not enough of the song is being played to get copyright. So, so you might know. change your YouTube around a little bit and just uh, do quicker snippets, like you know, eight seconds yeah. each. Maybe I don't know. Um, we'll see. I mean, I I want to do more mixes too. I want to like record. I have like a bunch of my sets recorded. I just have never gotten around to posting them. So I need to get on that too. But I've got a pretty slow January. So that's that's all in the that and doing some lighting programming and changing around the light show. That's all. Right. It's all in the works. So the one question also I want to ask for you guys this year, is there another YouTuber? Again, we're in here, except for Hunter. Hunter closes YouTube channel down. Is there another YouTuber DJ that you follow this year that you're like, you discovered and you're like, hey, this guy's pretty cool. Is there someone else that you found? DJ Brentley, is there another DJ you found on YouTube? I know you're very busy and stuff like that, but if you get a chance to uh, watch a video here and there, is there someone who you found this year that you want to do a shout out to and say, hey, I found this person is a great DJ? Good question. I mean, honestly, the one sh one show I've been, you know, or podcast, whatever I've been listening to the most is about Matt Campbell's weddings, my wedding songs. And it's not, and it's because he has a wide variety of content. His DJ, you know, sometimes he'll be rapping about, you know, talking about here are the charts. Next time you'll have a DJ there. Next time you'll have an event coordinator there. So it gives you some different insight. What I would, what one of the things I'm really hoping to come across is some DJ who's got, who's not Nick Spinelli, who's got kind of got the flair of Jason Janai or Mark Farrell to watch when they do their entrances and intros, and they're you know when they interact with the crowd. That's been my, and moving you know like. When you're saying, you know, like as we go into next year, something I've been bouncing on my business partner is bettering my MC skills. And yeah, I can handle it all well, but I'd like to be better at it in my personal opinion. And maybe I'm rock solid. My business partner says I'm out of my mind for wanting to keep pushing hard because he, he's watched my intros and all of it. He's like, <laughs> even Mitch Taylor doesn't have a problem with it. So, and maybe it's me being overly critical, but I think that's an aspect that when I can start seeing more of them on YouTube and I am hunting for when I'm in the car and somebody is driving at night, I've got my buds in or I'm even just watching it through the car, watching gig logs to see if there's anything I'm coming across to learn something. And that's where I'm hoping to find more. Okay. But yeah, the My Wedding Songs podcast or YouTube channel has definitely spurred my interest a lot. Okay. Okay. So what about you, Hunter? Have you found someone on YouTube that you are following new this year that you're like, hey, this DJ is really great. I got to watch uh, their videos. Nah, I mean, I've been mostly watching the same old, same old with, uh, you know, DJ Bar, DJ J Book, and, you know, Cleveland Terry and all those other DJs. I've been watching the same old, same old. So I haven't really found anybody new. Okay. What about you, uh, Matt? Have you found someone that you are watching this year that you discovered? You're like, hey, DJ so and so. Mm -hmm. I watch, I watch him or her, and they're awesome. Well, I watch every single gig log that ever gets uploaded to YouTube. Um, is or at least I click on it as long as it's titled gig log because I have a uh, like a recurring search on my TV where I watch YouTube on. So if anybody anywhere uploads something with the title gig log, I will see it. Um, there's only been there's one guy that's been impressive, but it was only one gig, and the rest were pretty boring. Um, Casey K is his name. Um, he's He's got a couple videos. His first one was phenomenal, and then the rest were just kind of like, eh, afterwards. But he DJs in Oregon, where people are very vanilla. Not Portland, where they're cool, but like regular Oregon. <laughs> so... Um, you know, it's, uh, it's to be expected, but he had like a couple EDM ones and I was like, wow, this is dope. Like the last song of the night was Odessa, Last Goodbye, which is amazing. Um, so, uh, but his channel is pretty good. His, I like his, his, he's takes a lot of ideas from, um, Spinelli though. Like he copies a lot of it, um, to me, which is like, eh, whatever. Um, what else do I really like though? 
Um, I don't know. Like, I don't get excited to see certain DJ. Like, uh, I don't get excited when DJs upload stuff really anymore. Like, it's it's uh, nothing that's really standing out to me. It's like, oh my god, this is amazing. You know, I see, I see. Uh, Brentley celebrations on the river gig logs every other week. And I'm like, it's, it's the same venue and it's always center court or, or uh, what's uh, what's that? The river park. <laughs> yeah, I won't <laughs> complain. I, I will not complain because the amount of refer I mean, here I'm there so much. Oh, I'm sure. Uh, it's, I, I mean, my gear lives there half the season. I can just go back at the end of the night. If I'm doing back to backs, click off, grab my laptop and I just walk out the door. I will take every gig there yeah um there's a guy there is a guy in fresno uh which is central california here his name is dj g uh from infinity events and he's an indian uh he's a british indian dj and his productions are like insane so uh definitely check out his channel if you like gear i mean he, he does a lot of really cool stuff um other than that though like there's not much I don't know. I tried like a cool Spinelli thing. I don't D, uh Jay Book says that I did it first. I maybe had done it on one of my gig logs because two other people in the live stream said I did, but I do the the I don't mess with you song, but at you I start it with you like soldier boy. Um maybe I did that first. I don't know, but I've been doing that lately and it's been going off pretty well. Yeah, so. get this. Jay Book is actually one of my fellow South Carolina DJs. I know. You guys should link up. <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> you guys should link up. Uh, yeah. no, that, that's the thing. Like to me is, uh, yeah. like DJ Bar, J Book, like uh, Justin, like all of them. It's the same setup every time. It's nothing new or unique. Same thing with Low Stacks. Same exact setup. Same music. Same everything every time. And to me, that's boring. Like it's I at least on my channel, I try to show different songs and different music all the time. Like if it's yeah, obviously the same songs are always going to work and they're always going to be bangers. Oh, and Rick Webb. I've also been watching Rick Webb. He is awesome. Yeah, Rick Webb's terrible. <laughs> He's not. All right. Terrible. So, Dwayne, what about you? What, what is there a DJ that you started following this year watching on YouTube that you guys say, hey, this is a guy, this, this DJ's a really cool cat, or this DJ, you know, is a really cool person. And uh, he or she is someone who I uh, just stumbled across, started following and watching. Um, there's some, oh, I have like two, two groups. I have okay. ones that's just up there. I, I start watching Cleveland Terry's, um, podcast on Thursday and then DJ J Brooks on this, what is it? Twisted, um, his Twisted. Yeah. yep. And as far as some of the lower end DJs, um, I watched, um, Steady Manuals. Um, I still watch um um the moose DJ oh. the moose from Texas. <laughs> he's entertaining. Yeah, and then he's um, up to like five hundred and thirty. Um, I like I when think. he says Spotify instead. Yeah, of Spotify. <laughs> Spotify. Well, hey, you know, and when I saw him, I was like, oh man, is this guy an idiot? Oh he man, he brands Spotify. himself really well. It's Spotify. <laughs> his new his new thing he's been doing haven't you guys seen his shorts yeah he'll show like it's like a moose in the wild walking around and he'd be like damn that moose is loose bro and like uh -huh. you know it's like he, he's 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 got that the market so i guess uh his name is terry now you know why i love youtube and now you know why i love youtube because of guys like him <laughs> amateurs but he's still he's, he seems like he seems like a, a good guy so it yeah. seemed like he be getting he he get he seemed like he be getting a whole bunch of gigs though. Yeah, so yeah. Hey, you know. And then also I watch um lavish was it lavish life. Oh Vicks, yeah. D yeah. Him. They're pretty cool. And then there's a local, there's a local guy. I'm thinking he's from Parma because I, there's a couple of spots I re I remember seeing before. Um I think it's Sin Sun. Oh yeah. He's he's yeah. interesting. His, uh, he's yeah. Uh, Ohio's a well. You're in Ohio, you know. It's it's an yeah. odd <laughs> Quite a mix of people. I also like DJ Donovan stuff. He's a pretty cool DJ from Australia, and I still have the headphones he sent to me. Mm -hmm. 
I love how DJ Barr like ghosted everybody for the longest time, and then he just did one gear review like a couple weeks ago, and everyone was like, uh, "We haven't seen you for six, seven months, and you do a gear review, and no instance of where you've been or any gigs." No. He, I think he got tired of YouTube. I remember him like on Rick Webb's show saying like he was going to stop. I, I think he got the other thing is that him as some of the other bigger YouTubers. Um, they got hit with a lot of strikes because of foul language yeah. and also because of music. So See, those two things, things right there. Yeah, yeah. That's another reason why I left YouTube. I keep getting hit with copyright strikes, and people said I was posting their video without their their permission. I was like, forget it. I am leaving YouTube and going to where somewhere I can actually post my gig logs and not really get in trouble with that. Well, again, people come in and say that. It, it, not sound bad. They're in. They're in a public event. They're in public. There's nothing to be done, and you know, there's no. There, the Supreme Court has ruled on that. There's no perception of, uh, of, of uh, privacy when you're in public. There, you can't yeah. be. You, you can't get that. So you can refilm in public, and yeah, a mom, yeah, yeah, a public event is a public event. Uh, you have to know that my mom's side of the family. They're not really. Yeah, they're not really. Yeah, my mom's side of the family was mostly not really camera people. They didn't really like being on camera. That's another thing. <laughs> all right, I'll come over there and film them all for you. Oh, <laughs> so Jeff, Heck what about no. Jeff? What about you? Have you discovered a DJ this year that you follow to uh, watch and see uh, what's happening? Uh, yeah, maybe a couple. There's one up in New Jersey, DJ Hi Kevin. I've discovered he's pretty laid back. He's kind of like the anti bar. Um, he's uh, pretty soft spoken, but uh, pretty decent DJ. You know, he's got a nice setup. So I followed, a, 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 found a few gigs of his online. Uh, um, Joe Bunn here in uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. You know, he's um, kind of like he's, he, he does uh, mostly weddings. You know, he doesn't do a whole lot of other uh, events. Um, though he does do do a few, um, I guess, um, kind of like community service type of events so i follow him uh that's about all I, I i i kind of view a lot and i don't have any anybody in particular that uh knew i'm following i just you know just uh love to watch other gig logs and um usually if it's if it's interesting in the first minute or two i'll watch it if it's not i won't i won't even finish it so i mean i'm kind of this, kind of in the same boat as solstice i'll you know it's a lot of them are the same thing over and over again. And, you know, I can't say that mine are any different, um, you know, because it's kind of hard to produce, you know, unique content in something like this. Um, but, you know, people discover you, you know, I get questions on a lot of my videos, um, you know, it's out of the blue, you know, and it's, uh, you know, a new DJ or a young DJ and they're asking, you know, what some people would consider a stupid question, you know, but there are no stupid questions and uh, I'm glad to answer them and uh you know help them out as much as i can and so it that's always nice to get that you know when you post a gig log and and uh you get response and uh some questions about your gear or questions about song or or whatever so yeah yeah the so for those of you questions are great been watching or, yeah if, when i was on youtube what did you guys think of my gig logs oh do you really you want to saw know? your gig logs when I, when I was on youtube before i left <laughs> I enjoyed. I enjoyed. Uh, I watched all your videos. I, I uh, even if I left mean comments, like I at least gave you a good watch because you were you're very entertaining. I'll give you that. I always gave you a thumbs up, Hunter. You, I, you, come you know what I said, always said to you. I always. I'm. I'm always. I always want to spin positive when I talk to. D I may ask questions, like have you thought of this or thought of that, but I always tell you you did a good job because you did. You did a great job on there. And again, I miss you on YouTube. I miss your gig logs. I miss well, you I do your feel, enthusiasm. Uh, I, do, I, do, no, I do feel safer on TikTok than I do on YouTube. That's fine. YouTube again, you have to do what's best for you, man. I'm not going to tell you what to do. You do what's best for you. I know. Yeah. So um, I feel like I have to sneeze, so I'm trying trying, <laughs> trying not to sneeze. Uh, DJ Galvan, G-A-L-V-A-N. Oh, yeah. um, he is a the beast of Berwyn. Yep, the beast Chicago of Berwyn. He's DJ, so he's in suburban Berwyn. Um, he does a lot of Hispanic stuff, and um, 
it's very it's it's interesting uh listening to him and how he does things how he sets things up he's my new discovery this year i've been watching him uh he has like 304 subscribers um seems like a really cool dude um the other one I always watch is our local Chicago DJ, Adrian E. He's actually in the chat uh, when he posts stuff on social media. I, I tried to go watch him for stuff or see what he's doing. Uh, he always posts some cool, interesting things. And, you know, it's one of the things that when I talk to people, be whoever the DJ is, it, it's it's always interesting to find out is how can I help them? How can I, if there's anything I can help them with? And, uh, DJ Galvin, you know, maybe hopefully, maybe one day we have him on the show or something, uh, just like some of the other DJs. And that's 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 one of the things for 2024. Um, I want to see if we can add another person here or there to come in and out because I, I like when we have the guests that come in and visit and talk about how they do things because it's great. It gives the, the the room something to talk about. Plus, also, it it gives you another perspective on what can be done, and not every one person. Not one way is right. One way is the only way. Unless you're Matt, then the only way is right. It's the way he does it. Other than that, when everybody else does things, you know, you do what's best for you. And you have to do what's best for your business. I always tell Hunter that. And I will tell any DJ, at the end of the day, it's your business. You have to decide what to charge, how to charge, when to charge, what kind of gear you want to use. Only thing I would like to see with DJs is progression to get better and ask questions. If you're still got a gear set stuck in the 1990s and you're starting out, no problem. But when you get some money, you add a little bit to it. You add a little bit to it. That's one thing with Hunter. Hunter started out very, very basic and grew and grew and grew and added new things. You know, not was it the same as what Matt wanted? No, because he wasn't making the same amount of money, but he had progression. And that's why I like Hunter. And that's why I like Matt. They're two totally different ops of DJs do totally different events, two totally different mindsets, but that's the difference between them. Just like I like Jeff, just like I like Brentley, just like I like Dwayne. They all do things differently. Just like I like how I do my things. Is it right or wrong? No. Do we share information? Yes. Are there better ways of doing things? Sure. And I will share what I do. But ultimately, you out there as a DJ have to decide what is best for you? Just like everyone here has to decide what's best for them and their business. And that's why you'll never hear me say, well, you must do the same thing I do. No, it's what, what works for you. And, you know, one of the things also I want to thank everyone here for the past year of having a great time here on the show and giving a lot of great input. And I appreciate everyone that comes in. And I appreciate you all for talking and, and watching the show as well out there and giving the comments down below. Make sure also you're taking time out for this year. This I've been saying basically all this summer. Uh, this is time of year where a lot of people have, you know, questions or have, uh, you know, they're depressed. They're, they're tired. They're worn out from the year. Make sure you take time for yourself and for your family. Make sure you spend time with your loved ones. Make sure you spend some time with friends. Make sure you make some new friends. And make sure you take care of yourself and everyone else. So, Hunter, is there any well wishes or anything like that you want to say to anyone out there in YouTube or on Twitch? Well, um, I want to thank everyone for a great year. And, you know, thank you, buddy, for having me on the show. It lets me have something to do on a Tuesday night and really connect with other DJs because here in South Carolina, I don't really see many DJs around town that I can connect with around town. So it's always good to come on here and, and really show or be shown that I truly matter as a DJ. And well, Hunter, Hunter, you're always on the beach. That's why, because you're the best DJ on the beach. So you have to be on the yeah. beach. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad that you enjoy yourself here. You have fun. Oh, and um, just to let you, just to let you guys know, I will be on Twitch on New Year's Eve for a special New Year's Eve live stream. I'll be kicking up the jams to ring in 2024. Woo well, well, I guess we'll be watching that. Jeff, is there uh, something you want to say to everyone out there in YouTube land and on Twitch? Um. 
No, not really. <laughs> uh, just, hey, you know, thanks for watching. If you're watching the show or uh, or watching on YouTube, I appreciate it. We all appreciate it. Um, you know, keep the questions coming. You know, we're, we're more than happy to answer whatever questions you have and, um, and help each other. You know, I've had questions, um, over the years and, and uh, many times I was too shy to ask. So, you know, don't, don't ever be too shy. This is very, very true. Very, very true. Bradley, what about you? You got anything to add to that? Anything you want to say, shout, you want to say to someone or. I really can't. I mean, it's been a great year. I mean, I'm super thankful that everyone comes out to me, you know, like for my club and pub gigs, I'm thankful for everyone coming out to them. It's been one hell of a year. I mean, I can't, you know, it's been rocking. Thanks to everyone for sure. And thanks for having me on the show. It's been a blast. Well, it's always good to have you here, man. You know, it's good to have everyone here. Uh, Dwayne, what about you, sir? Is there a shout out you want to do for this last episode of the year or you want to say anything? You want to thank anyone? You want to say anything cool or you're muted? I'm muted. Oh, I was coughing. <laughs> uh, I know. I know exactly. I uh, try to cough myself, mute myself. Don't, don't feel bad. <laughs> but I just hope that everybody have a blessed holiday and a prosperous New Year's. Thank you so much, Dwayne. Yeah, you know, next year is the year I turn 30. Oh, big God. Oh, <laughs> don't worry about it. No big deal. I'm going to get you a wife. I'm getting old. Don't bother with are, wife. Man. Stay happy. Stay single. Yeah, yeah, we're, all, we're, all, we're all old. No, getting married is a good thing. I'm married. Jeff's married. Yeah, but you're you're... You're from a different generation. A different generation. <laughs> yeah. You make us like like ninety years old, and uh, Brentley, <laughs> uh, you're the same age as me, basically, dude. Uh, uh, yeah, but yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. still think I'm like twenty five years old. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, my mind. I really do. I'm, Tracy was saying Brent, I'm twelve Brentley's, years old. My mindset. So, Brentley's down in like six AMFs a night at the clubs still. <laughs> So, uh, DJ Salsas, Matt, is there anything you want to say to anyone out there? Um, not really. I mean, I act like a dick sometimes online, but my points are valid. I don't just call people out to call people out. Like, I call people out so that they notice what they're doing is, uh, you know, can be seen as not good. Or, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not just commenting to hate on somebody like i'm definitely not jealous it's just some of my comments like read into them because i'm telling you like if if i say this wedding looks like a bunch of people just standing around and grooving and not having the time of their life like they should be at a wedding then maybe you should switch up the music a little bit and stop playing sweet caroline you know uh so i i don't mean my comments in a negative way i think i they perceive that way uh maybe but... for 2024 it would be nicer. Just maybe, just maybe. A little maybe, bit, maybe a little bit. Just in 2024, the only thing I would say critique would be maybe you might want to think about how can I track more flies with honey and do it vinegar? You know, there's, mm -hmm. there's constructive criticism and there's stuff other than that. And I would say go more constructive criticism than being more bitter. And it's not questioning you being jealous or anything like that. It's a question of how you how it comes off. Read it, and again, if think put yourself into Hunter's shoes or someone else's shoes, how they're receiving it and how they're taking it, and that right there could help them out. Um, and with every critique, uh, negative critique, just remember that's uh, one person watching your video. Yeah. So well, bring them on. <laughs> More watchers, the better. Yeah. I hate negative. I hate negativity. Only positivity. <laughs> Well, again, there, there, there's there's negativity in the way of a comment that to help you, and then there's people just being mean. Someone's saying, "Hey, you look at me, and go, oh, you're you're a fat guy." That's just someone being mean, and it's like, okay, whatever. But someone says, "Hey, I wouldn't do that. What have you thought about trying this? See, that, like, I, I don't do it this way, but I do it that way. There's always better ways of doing things." One other thing I got to call is DJ Aga. He's always uh, giving comments. Um, yeah, he, yeah, he used to be one of my viewers, but I guess he couldn't find me on my newer page. So I don't know what happened there. <laughs> he always he always comments and stuff like that. Um, yeah. 
He said this uh, for the last show, so we'll go with this, end of tonight with this. I have had this happen. Um, I've had this never happen. Uh, but about someone tipped me 20 or $50 for a surprise engagement request at a wedding. Um, I don't think I could do it without asking the bride and groom's permission. That's from the last um, episode where we're talking about people doing surprise engagements. And uh, he said that, you know, he's never had anyone give him, try to give him money or that or try and do that. But again, he would go and ask permission, which is what should be done. And uh, he also, I respect that answer from Hitman. So he called you out, Hitman. I keep it uh, clean. I would probably try to shake my New York ways and go with you pay me and I will pay you. So, Dwayne, there you go. Thank you again, sir, for answering right. your question. And I want to thank you guys all for being here tonight. This is the last episode of this year. Again, we'll be back next year in January. <coughs> excuse me, on the 9th. And um, until then, remember, enjoy yourself, enjoy your friends, enjoy your family. Be safe, take care, be kind to other people, do something nice for someone this holiday season. You're in the line at Dunkin' Donuts at, at, at Hunter's favorite place. Buy the person behind you a cup of coffee or a donut in Hunter's name. or Because you never know, it could be Hunter behind you. Or do something else. You're in Starbucks or whatever. Buy someone a cup of coffee, especially those people who serve us. You see a police officer, a firefighter, public works person, someone like that, UPS, Amazon, take care of them all. They work, yeah, they work for us. They work hard for us and they need to be thanked as well. And also thank your DJ as well if you're not a DJ. Other than that, guys, <laughs> we will see you next year. Be safe. Have a good night. And, and this Christmas. time, I'm going to have Dwayne Merry take Christmas, us everyone. out. Dwayne. Peace, everyone. See you guys in 2024. Dwayne, take us out. Oh, peace out. Woo! <laughs> there we go. Yeah. <laughs> Another successful DJ roundtable. <laughs>